A couple of years back I discussed the various ports available at the time for Sonic 3 & Knuckles. Back then the only bespoke ports we had were Sonic Jam for the Sega Saturn and the Sonic & Knuckles collection for PC, officially speaking. There was also the fan project Sonic 3 Air that brought us the closest thing to a retro engine version of the game for the time. Aside from that, we had some compilations that emulated Sonic 3 & Knuckles to varying degrees of quality. As I've posted in my previous video, where I expand upon these releases in more depth, the last official Sega release of Sonic 3 & Knuckles was the Steam release in 2011. Well, a lot can change in two years. Oof, those world events. But yeah, a lot can change for Sonic 3 & Knuckles as well. Now, it wouldn't be a Sonic release in a post-Dreamcast era without some controversy, and you can say the 2022 release, Sonic Origins, was, and still is, somewhat of a talking point for the fandom in that regard. Sonic Origins comprises the classic 16-bit era Sonic games 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles, and CD. To date, we already had mobile phone releases of Sonic 1, 2, and CD that all ran on the new shiny retro engine prior to Origins' release. Sonic CD also got released on the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Steam in this capacity. We've been port begging for these versions to hit consoles since 2013, and for Sonic 3 & Knuckles to get the same treatment. It had been ages since we'd even had an emulated release of Sonic 3 & Knuckles, with its absence somewhat conspicuous from Sega compilations, such as the Sega Mega Drive Classics for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch. It was even absent from the Sega Ages lineup of games for Switch. Every one of these games featured on Sonic Origins runs on a retro engine created by Taxman Stealth and their development teams. These are bespoke ports and they are not mere emulations. I mean that sounds ideal right? It's what we've been asking for for ages? I mean we asked for retro engine ports and we got them right? Well, it's not quite that simple. Headcanon Studios were tasked with developing the Sonic 3 & Knuckles component, however, integrating this into the Origins compilation was handled in-house by Sega. Stealth and his team were unhappy with how Origins turned out as a whole, and especially with how Sonic 3 & Knuckles turned out. It was due to project mismanagement by executives and crunch conditions that there were a number of technical issues on Sonic Origins launch, with a large portion of them reputably being found on the Sonic 3 & Knuckles component, and it released this way despite the best efforts of Stealth and his team to acquire more time to fix these issues from Sega. While I cannot elaborate beyond the testimony of Stealth's Twitter thread, I find it completely plausible that Sega would be this difficult to work with based on their reputation. A number of these technical issues have been addressed with a patch as of writing this, however it's still imperfect. Whether we have more patches due to be released remains to be seen. Another controversial talking point is the soundtrack. If you've been watching Sonic content on YouTube for about 5 minutes or so, you'll probably be aware of the discussions around the original themes of Carnival Night Zone, Ice Cap Zone, and Launch Bay Zone having been composed by Michael Jackson and his production team, and the rights disputes surrounding this music between Michael Jackson's estate and Sega. It's practically confirmed that this rights dispute is responsible for a couple of controversial aspects of Sonic Origins release. The first being that older digital versions of Sonic 3 & Knuckles featuring that Michael Jackson music have been delisted and can no longer be purchased. And the second aspect is that the music tracks for those zones have been replaced in Sonic Origins. <laughs> In my previous video covering the Sonic 3 ports, I discussed the existence of prototype tracks that were composed for use in the aforementioned Sonic 3 zones before the Michael Jackson tracks got implemented. There were versions of these prototype tracks that actually were featured in the Sonic & Knuckles collection for PC that run through either Adlib or General MIDI. Additionally, some fan projects like Sonic 3 Complete and Sonic 3 Angel Island Revisited feature the option to select the prototype tracks for their selective zones. Sonic Origins replaced tracks use the same composition as the prototype tracks, but have been remixed and sound different.
I prefer how the original prototypes for Mega Drive sound over these remixes for Origins, but I don't feel strongly for or against them. I'm not too heartbroken over the loss of the MJ music. Ice Cap Zone was the biggest loss for me, but I don't hate the new track. Carnival Night I always disliked, and Launch Base I was always ambivalent to. I'm just glad that Flying Battery Zone is an original Sega track, that was always my favourite of Three and Knuckles, with Hydro City at a close second. Additionally, the soundtrack in general sounds kind of compressed and low bitrate throughout. It's not ear gratingly terrible, but it's not the best I've heard in terms of fidelity. I can notice it, but I can tolerate it. But your experience may vary, you may find it intolerable, or you may not even notice at all. Again, sensory sensitivity does vary from person to person. Sonic Origins has also been the subject of criticism, down to the way it handles pixel scaling and visual fidelity. Sonic Origins as a whole lacks something called Nearest Neighbour Interpolation Scaling, which in layman terms means replacing every pixel with the nearest pixel on the output, and for upscaling this means multiple pixels of the same colour will be present. This can preserve sharp details in pixel art, but also introduce jaggedness in previously smooth images. As a result, the picture is softer than many users would like it to be. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I can see how this kind of looks a bit softer than Sonic 3 Air or Sonic Mania, but on the other hand, I'll take this over the delisted Xbox Live Arcade port any day. I've seen online that the PC release has been modded to be scaled better. Once again, the fandom has to fix Sega screw-ups, it seems. On the note of the PC release, they put De Nuvo Anti-Tamper DRM into Origins. Why is De Nuvo bad? It has a high level of CPU resource use, which can slow some PCs down, and excessive read slash write operations that can cause lifespan reductions for SSDs. There are also claims of De Nuvo being a security risk. Well, if any games need to be protected from piracy with anti consumer measures, it's totally these decades old 16 bit games. A lot of reviews for Sonic Origins have been pretty scathing and negative due to the technical issues and the controversy stated. The thing is, beyond the issue stated, I don't really hate this release myself. I kind of want to hate it out of principle because of the corporate BS, but first and foremost, I want to be fair and balanced. It's better than the awful delisted Xbox Live Arcade port on the basis of maintaining Sonic 3's save system, and despite lack of nearest neighbour interpolation, it looks better than that release. It adds the Big Arms boss fight to the Locked On experience, previously only featured in Sonic 3 Standalone. It adds some nice intro and outro cutscenes. Sonic has his drop dash and right from the start. Even the great fan release Sonic 3 Air makes you rack up achievements to unlock drop dash, and my preference is to have it right away. There are some new animations added to this game, and Super Sonic has a separate transformation button so you can continue to use each character's abilities like Drop Dash or Gliding or Flight without having to be forced to transform. There's a different Super Music theme, there's a different ending theme, and I like that you can spend coins to retry special stages. There's a 4-3 option via Classic Mode, there's the Mirror Mode, there's Boss Rush. I think as well, I've been lucky in terms of bugs, but I won't deny their existence as I've seen footage of them both from friends and online, and I'm not about to gaslight anyone on that front. I can only talk from my own experience, and to summarise, I have some complaints and issues with this release, and some things I'd like improved, and I think the asking price is too high, and the corporate toxicity around this release does leave a bad taste in one's mouth, and the technical issues do need addressing, and the audio could do a decompression, but I can't say I didn't have fun with this. It's nice to have an official retro engine port on consoles now. It has some neat features not seen in any previous official release, and if these issues I hold with this release were addressed and we got a Sonic Origins Plus as a physical release next year, I'd be tempted to double dip and get that for my Switch to have portably. If the PC version were at a lower price point and it removed Denuvo, that's something I'd probably consider for mods, depends on what we see for that. 
That's about all I can say for Sonic 3 & Knuckles on its Origins release for now. In the meantime, I just want to go over some developments regarding fan projects since my last video. So, I discussed Sonic 3 Air's build back in 2020. Since then, it's been ported to Android, modded Switches, Linux, and Mac OS. The latest Windows release was in summer of 2021. One of the stated requirements of Sonic 3 Air is to have a legitimate copy of the scene version of Sonic 3 & Knuckles to acquire the ROM from. This is an uncompressed ROM. Unfortunately, this version is delisted. The only way you can acquire Sonic 3 & Knuckles outside of used market physical purchases is via Sonic Origins, and this version does not have a ROM that you can extract. How you acquire the ROM now post delisting is for you to look into, but it does need to be an uncompressed ROM and named in the same format as the Steam version. I've left a guide in the description as a place to start. This ROM requirement applies to the Windows version, Android version, and any other version of Sonic 3 Air. Sonic 3 Air is still my favourite Sonic 3 & Knuckles release. Considering all of the options you have for features like abilities, level order, visual scaling, soundtrack, and just generally how polished it is, it's my favourite way to play the game. Now that I can run it on my phone with a Bluetooth controller, it's my favourite way to play this game on the go now too. Since the last video, I've also acquired a Mega Everdrive X3, and I sometimes play Sonic 3 Complete on my Mega Drive console. Sometimes using original hardware is just an intangibly nice experience, and a lower end Everdrive actually runs this game great, as I'm sure the higher end models do too. This version 2 features a bunch of options to tinker with the soundtrack and level order just like Sonic 3 Air. In terms of playing on original hardware, this is my favourite way to play Sonic 3. You have several really good options available for playing Sonic 3 & Knuckles these days, and despite the issues that Sonic Origins has, I'm glad to see that Sega are distributing the game again in some form, after it was missing from stuff like the 3DS Classics range on the 3DS, Sega Ages on the Switch, and the Sega Mega Drive Classics compilation for current systems. It's being handled better than the DS release and the old delisted Xbox Live Arcade release were, and having it available on Retro Engine in some form is a valuable thing, and with a Switch release for on the go too. I still consider Sonic 3 & Knuckles the best game of the franchise, and I encourage everyone to run through it, get the Emeralds, do a Knuckles run afterwards, and get everything out of this game. Thank you for watching.